Hello and welcome to Fallout 4 Mods and More. Whoa, 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 what is this? Who said you are allowed to make a whole episode by yourself? I bet the mods you selected aren't even... Huh. Actually, now that I look at that, this is actually a really nice list. Alright, let's check them out. But first, a word from our sponsor, Anybird.com. A great digital marketplace with a constantly expanding library of best new games, gift cards, game points, a 24-7 live customer support service and much, much more. Now, for example, also featuring a mobile game section. Also, make sure to keep an eye out for the fantastic limited deals that happen from time to time, like the currently going Forge Your Legend. Legend event, where you can get games like the Burning Hot Dragon's Dogma 2 and other titles with over 90% off, which is obviously way cheaper than anywhere else. Follow the links in the description to register now and get your favorite games super cheap and have a fun time gaming. Okay, so admittedly those are not all brand new weapon mods, some of them are actually from last year. But the thing is, I just keep finding really great ones and thinking, wow, how did I miss that? And so probably have you. So this should be useful information nevertheless. So the first mod is the Attachment Pack, a huge addition to the existing weapons in the game. In other words, this mod does not introduce new weapons, but instead pimps out the vanilla ones and makes them shine in a brand new and interesting light. Those attachments actually look very lore-friendly and fitting. I think this could easily pass as an official DLC. Here are some examples of what this mod does, so see for yourself. And it obviously opens up a lot of new customization possibilities. It is a really awesome mod. I don't even remember the last time that I spent that much time with vanilla weapons, but this mod just really makes it worth it. So if you are planning to start a new game or something like that, then this is definitely worth getting. Okay, next we have another bunch of modern weaponry, although there are always a lot. So let's start with the awesome Honey Badger, a very highly customizable assault rifle. He be a small boy, but he bites like a big one. Yes, very nice fire rate there, and you can also get different running animations for this weapon. It can be very compact and tasty looking, but can also get a bit bigger, that's what she said, depending on how you customize it. There are also some pretty crazy scope options for this one. The next one is another one from the Zig Zauer family, the MCX Virtues. Also a very tasty looking assault rifle for sure. The customization here is really decent, lots of cool attachments, nice skins, really everything you need to have some fun. Thank you. 
Next, another one of the bigger mods, Expansive Kalashnikov 3.2 from Modern Warfare. Here we actually get several things, the Kalashnikov itself, the Staccato PM2011 pistol and the Ghost outfit. Those are some fancy animations right there. They give no tactical advantage whatsoever. Shut up. And besides, both guns have some really huge customization options. Not only a lot of cool attachments and skins that allow you to completely change this AK and make it look like totally different guns, but you can also do all kinds of cool things with it like change the ammo type to all kinds of fun rounds. You can equip an underbarrel grenade launcher and use different grenade types like cryo, incineration and so on. There are some unique guns like the energy shooting prototype. Yes, it even says prototype on this talk, or the pimpy looking golden AK. Definitely a mod with a heck load of possibilities. Then there is also the MOTM AAC Q Honey Badger. It's kind of a hybrid between those two weapons and goes by the name Chimera in Modern Warfare. So it's visually pretty close to the other Honey Badger mod, except the customization is a bit more fruity here, lots of interesting skins. And I sure do love me some colorful customization, it's art. The next weapon is the FJX Imperium, a very solid looking sniper rifle, also from Modern Warfare. I really dig that design with the carrying handle. Don't know about you, but those animations absolutely give me goosebumps. That good old bolt action, the sounds, the camera shake, it's like I am there. It's awesome. The customization for this sniper is not very big, but it has enough variety. And there is also a unique colorful variant as well. And another one from the Modern Warfare family, the ISO Hemlock, a unique assault rifle that is able to use two different ammo types. Very interesting.
Fairly standard customization here, lots of different attachments, no skins though. Also, something weird is going on with that flashlight right there. Next, we have a couple of weapons from a slightly different origin. Cyberpunk 2077. The G58 Dion rifle looks as one would expect very futuristic. Very cool animations, obviously, since they are from Cyberpunk. The visual customization, though, is pretty much not present here. You only get two different skins for this weapon, and that's it. You can, however, change between three different equip animations. And another cyberpunk weapon, the Mandalorian, no wait, the Melorian arms, 3516, a cool futuristic pistol. Again, very cool animations, but unfortunately no visible customization. Ok fellas, next we have a couple of a bit more lore friendly mods, starting with the Levis Gun, a weapon from the upcoming Fallout London DLC. This one is really hot right now, because it might actually be released soon. Yes, that would be a first that one of those huge projects actually gets finished, so fingers crossed. Very professionally done weapon, the design looks very lore friendly, the animations look great, and the customization lets you turn it into a laser or plasma rifle. So pretty close to what the vanilla weapons are like. You can also change the carry animations by adding this handle on top. Then there is also the Recharger Weaponry from Fallout 4 New Vegas, another huge DLC project. This mod includes the Recharger Rifle, the Recharger Pistol and also the Hyperbreeder Alpha. It's an interesting concept, this weapon does not use any ammo and instead it recharges its energy over time, hence the name. And the customization is also quite nice and close to vanilla for this one. And another energy weapon, the Photon Disruptor. This is another addition to the Institute weaponry, and it sure looks fitting. This 
this weapon has a very practical design. It can be alternatively used as a comb. Haha, <laughs> very funny. Hair is for the weak anyway. Ah, you're just jealous. Anyway, the customization here is also pretty much like vanilla. Next we have a couple of classic guns, like the BH Kerr 98K, finally some German bolt action. This mod includes a separate usable bayonet, the Mauser K98K and its big brother, the Tankgewehr M1980. Yes, the tank gewehr has actually only one big bullet. It was also the first tank killer rifle ever made. I wonder if it was really able to take down a tank. According to Wikipedia, it was technically possible with a couple of precise and lucky hits, but the recoil was so intense that soldiers were not able to give off more than a couple of shots without incapacitating themselves, so it really happened. Anyway, the customization has a lot of skins and also a huge variety of stuff you can wrap around the rifle to make it look cooler. Also, something I am seeing for the first time, some of the skins are actually locked and have missing textures. To get those you actually have to go to their discord. Okay, I guess. I mean, I'm not gonna question that. I actually remember Nero did something similar with the textures for their mods too, back in the day. The next weapon is the Winchester 1887 lever action shotgun. This bad boy comes with two different animations, the normal one and the spinny one after each shot. The customization here has some really interesting sounding ammo options and also some rather interesting visual elements. I am of course talking about the spikes that may or may not injure the wielder. I guess it depends on how badass you are. There is also a unique variant with flowers. Flowers. Yeah, I don't know either. Then we have another special weapon, the SKS Redux. Now don't be alarmed, but word is that this mod might be a little red. Yeah, the animations look a bit weird, but there is a lot of really cool customization. There are bayonets, usable as standalone melee weapons. There are a lot of usual and also makeshift looking attachments, and there is a huge variety of skins. Some of them will only be unlocked after you find the corresponding magazines.
We also got a pretty cool SMG, SR2 Varesk. This weapon looks very detailed, light and easy to use. The reload animation seems a tad slow for such a light weapon, in my opinion. I guess you could say it's realistic. And in terms of customization, there are some cool unique variants with really cool looking energy effects. Ok, next we have something you really don't see every day. Shield framework. I was not sure if I should put this into a weapons video, but it was in the weapons category on the Nexus 2, so here we go. This is supposed to be the first fully and realistically working ballistic shield integration into the game. This is just a framework mod, but it already includes one simple riot shield as example. And there is also the SIP, shield integration project mod, that makes use of this framework and adds a lot more shields. Some basic ballistic shields, some fitting faction shields, a super immersive Mylurk shield that suspiciously looks like it escaped from Skyrim, an experimental institute looking energy shield and so on. And all those shields work in a realistic way, meaning they don't just simply block all damage coming from a certain angle, but actually have fully meshed collision objects with a customizable damage threshold according to the materials they are made of. So if you have a shield made of metal and glass for example, it will behave differently depending which part is hit, so the shields will block shots and explosive in a realistic way. Even low level enemies with shields will be tough, but still go down if you hit exposed parts. It's actually really awesome and feels immersive as hell. Since it's a framework mod, people will be able to create and fully customize their own shields. Things like different materials, camera shake and recoil. Also add new enemies with shields and maybe even some monsters with partially bulletproof parts. It is not possible to use the shield with a handgun for example just yet, because the shield itself counts as a weapon. But I believe it is technically possible to make a combo object and it might be done in the future. The shields however do have custom bash and also grenade throwing animations. This SIP shield integration project by the way does not only add those shields, but also spreads them throughout the world for you to find, and also distributes them to the enemies, so combat will definitely be a bit more spicy and unexpected, when enemies will all of a sudden try to rush you with a shield and bash your brains in. Anyway, this is all for this episode, the links to all mods can be found as always in the description below, don't forget to endorse the mods you like. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome mods if you haven't already, and see you around.